saw me entering the world of classical dance at the age of four. That early engagement led to a few medals and prizes and a scholarship to study at the world-renowned Kalakshetra started by Rukmini Devi Arundel in Chennai. I was 11. I had decided to make classical dance, to train for classical dance full time. Making my promise to my father that I'd at least be a high school graduate, I went on to do high school and graduation through long distance learning. Returning back from Kalakshetra to Hyderabad, I became a young teacher of dance at the age of 17. Later, at university, pursuing academics and research, I sat for the Union Public Service Commission exams, the exams that selects the administrators of the country, and was selected to join the Indian Railway Traffic Service, as was said, becoming the first lady officer of the Indian Railway Traffic Service and South Central Railway, and yes, had to fight for the, the bathroom. But being selected there brought me to a big crossroad in my life. The crossroad of being on 24 by 7, full-time, operations-driven railway administration, and on the other hand, a passion that was soon becoming almost an alternate career. I was advised to give up my dance. But I decided that I would tread both tracks, pardon the railway metaphor. And then began the negotiation and the navigation between early morning dance rehearsals and office timing and programs and practice and choreography with hierarchy and bureaucracy. That early decision continues to hold me in good stead. I still serve in the Indian Railways and I still continue to engage with dance in its entirety as a performer, teacher, choreographer and writer. Last year I was bit by the entrepreneur bug and decided to bring dance into the world of the digital and launched a first of its kind browser-based application called Natya Ramba to help young dancers practice their basics outside the classroom. And in 2007, I was grateful to receive the publishing. On the 1st of July 2008, I sat numbstruck in my doctor's chambers hearing the word carcinoma. I then went on to hear other words, cancer, stage, grade. Until then, cancer was my friend's zodiac sign. Stage was what I danced on, and grade was what I got in school. But that day, they took on a really ominous meaning. I realized that day that I now had an unwelcome, uninvited, unwanted life partner. Driving home with my husband, Giant, and spreading Shedding copious tears, I asked him if this was the end of the road, if this was it, not so much as in life, but is this the end of the road of my dance? And he said, no, this is a hiatus, take your treatment and you'll be fine. So drawing strength from that energy, I made three loud affirmations. I said, I will write this out, I will not allow cancer to write me. I said, I will not say, why me? I didn't say, why me when I got the Padmashree, so why should I say, why me now? And the third decision I made is, cancer is one page in my life, it's not the book of my life. These early affirmations found resonance. The affirmations found resonance and strength and an anchor in my dance. I decided I was going to dance through cancer. But it wasn't easy. It most definitely wasn't easy. I went from despair and anger and misery. I couldn't climb stairs. I could dance. And I went from beautiful to bald in three days. But I decided that I was going to dance. And so I would step into my studio 
and draw from the prana of dance, the poetry, the movement, the metaphor, the philosophy, and they continue to embrace me and engulf me and energize me to such an extent that my focus shifted from cancer to dance to such an extent that I danced weeks after surgery, I danced to chemotherapy, and I danced to radiation. I have made the choice of dance over cancer. In retrospect, what I think I had done is I had changed the narrative for myself. I had decided that I'm going to write the narrative of cancer the way I want it. In retrospect, I told myself and my tumor, I said, hey fellow, well met, be on your way, I don't have time for you. I also decided not to give cancer the importance it was begging of me. Cancer does come with a lot of clamor, clutter and melodrama, don't we know? And I said, I'm not going down that spiral, that vortex. I refuse to be sucked down by that narrative. I said, I'm going to call cancer just a challenge, a little speed breaker. That's it. It is no abyss, no brink, no chasm, no edge to come back from. Just a challenge that I'm going to deal with. And I made that choice of dance over cancer. Dancer sounds better than cancer, doesn't it? We were all given multiple choices in life, from the inane and the mundane to the sacred and the sacrosanct. And that is what makes us uniquely human. We are impressed with a million choices, 